So in this lecture, we're going to continue or we're going to start drill project three. I'm looking at the Canvas page for this class. If I go to modules, and then if I go down to drill project three, the, the, the discussion, that takes us to the drill project three discussion page or project page. And like the two previous projects, you'll see a drawing, an engineering drawing, giving us the instructions on how to go about building this part. If I scroll down, you can see that there are some recorded lectures from previous semesters. So recorded lectures from spring 2021 semester. Um, so this video is available here. And then there's some videos from, let's see here, the previous semester, fall 2020, so a year ago. <clears throat> And for some reason, I think this one only has one video and it doesn't complete the project. We'll complete the project in this class, uh, but if you wanna see the project and it's you know, completed all the way through, watch the videos from the fall 2020 semester. I scroll down, I go to the modeling drill project three. We have the instructions that we're gonna follow on, on building the part. There's some uh, instructions on how to create the tool paths. some example dialog boxes. And when we get to the very bottom, there is a tool list, very similar to the tool list from the previous project. And you can also download the PDF of the drawing if you want to. I'm just gonna reference the image of the drawing on the project page. So I'm scrolling all the way back to the top where the drawing is, looking at the part, and Right away, I'm seeing, um, I see that the part measures four inches by 2.5 inches by one inch thick. I can see the number of holes called out by this, or defined by this call out right here. We have instructions to engrave first and last initial here. Use 0.25 tall box font. So right about there. If I read the notes, it says origin is upper right corner of the part. So on the previous projects, the origin was here and here. On this particular project, the origin is going to be here. And you'll notice that the drawing, I'm sorry, you'll notice that the dimensions have this edge and this edge in common. They're both referencing, or majority of the dimensions are referencing this edge or this edge. And the intersection of those, of those two edges will be our origin. We also have instructions, uh, spot drill all holes prior to drilling, drill all holes as shown. So what we'll do is we'll start by creating a 2D representation of the part. And then we'll fr and from that 2D representation of the part, we'll create a solid model. So I'll go back into Mastercam. Anytime I start creating a model, I like to maximize my graphics area. So I'll close out of any manager that might be visible. I could do that by going to view and deselecting the blue icons, or you can just select the X at the upper right corner of the manager. Itself. <clears throat> For starters, I'm going to create a rectangular shape that represents the outside profile of the part. If I'm looking at the dimensions, the part measures four inches by 2.5. So let's create a rectangular shape that measures four by 2.5, and let's place the origin at the upper right corner. So back inside of Mastercam, I go to the Home tab. Make sure that the wireframe color is something that you can see with the current background color. So I've got mine set to green. I'll go to Wireframe. Under Rectangle, you'll find Rectangular Shapes. For the parameters of the Rectangular Shapes tool, I'm accepting these default settings. I've got type is set to rectangular, method is uh, base point. For the origin, set it to the upper right. For the width, set that to four. And then for the height, I'm clicking in the height field. I type in 2.5 and when I hit enter, I move my cursor to the graphics area and you'll see a preview of that four by 2.5 rectangular shape. I'm going to zoom. I'm not going to zoom. I'm going to actually move my cursor close to the origin. And you can see the cursor locking onto the origin. 
Once you see it lock into position, left click. From here, I'll just double check these values, four by 2.5, and then I'll select the green check. I can roll my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And something that would be a good idea to do, make sure that the rectangular shape is placed correctly relative to the origin. And a way that we can check that, if you go to the Home tab, go to Analyze, under Dynamic, expand that, select position. Now, if I select the opposite corner of the origin, let my cursor lock onto this endpoint. X is negative four, Y is negative 2.5. So that's correct relative to the origin. If, those, if, I, if I place this rectangle, uh, rectangular shape incorrectly, these numbers would not match the dimensions on the blueprint. So from here, I'll select OK, and I'll save my work. So this is a brand new file. While I'm saving it, I'm going to navigate to the class folder, so MACT 160 fall, and then I'll create a folder dedicated to this project. So in the blank field here, right click. From the flyout menu, I'll select New Folder. I'll call this Drill Project 3. And then inside this Drill Project 3 folder, I'll save the master cam file with the same name, so Drill Project 3. And once you do that, if you look at the top center of your screen, you can see the path to where this file is located at. So I've got it in the class folder in the project folder, and then you can see that it's saved as drill project three. From here, I'll go back to the project page. And if I look at the instructions, step one, use the rectangular shapes tool to create the outside profile of the part. We did that. Uh, step two, use the point position tool to create one point at the center of the hole closest to the origin. Now. This isn't the only way to go about doing this. This is just a, a recommended steps that I used. So we're gonna create a point at the center of the hole that's closest to the origin. Go back to the drawing. Here is my origin. Here's the hole closest to the origin. So I'm gonna place a point at the center of this hole. X is going to be what? So if this edge represents X zero, how far away from the edge is the center of this drilled hole? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Now we have to report the value relative to the origin. So it's going to be X, what 0. 0.5? Negative. Negative 0. 0.5, correct. So relative to this edge, this edge represents X zero. The X coordinate relative to this edge is going to be X negative 0. 0.5. Let's do the same thing for the Y coordinate for this drilled hole. This edge represents Y zero. How far away from this edge is the center of this drilled hole along the Y axis? Negative 0.625. Correct. So the X and Y coordinate, X will be negative 0.5, Y will be negative 0.625. And we need to think of it that way because that's the, type of, that's the information that we're gonna enter into MasterCAM. So if I go back to master cam, we're gonna use the point tool. Go to wireframe, point position. Master cam is prompting us to create point position. If I hit my space bar, that makes this field available to me. And there's different ways you can enter the information. If you type in X negative 0.5, Y negative 0.625, just double checking my values, X negative 0.5, Y negative 0.65. And if I hit enter, you'll see a point appear on your screen. This will be the only point that we create using this tool. So from here, I'll select OK. And I definitely want to check the position of that point. So once again, I'll go to the Home tab. I'm going to go to Analyze. Under Dynamic, you'll find Position. 
It says select the position. I'll let my cursor lock on to this point. And then it brings up this dialog box. So relative to the origin or relative to the current origin, the X for that point is at negative 0.5 and the Y is at negative 0.625. So we're gonna use the dimension tools to verify that everything's placed correctly. But because I've got a lot depending on the location of this point, we're gonna translate this numerous times in the X and the Y axis. I want to make sure that's placed correctly because I can really make some difficult, I can make some hard, I can make some um, problems for myself here. So I'm just double checking that it's located in the correct location. I'll select OK. From here, I'll go back to the instructions. Hey, uh, uh, sir, if, if the point position is not popping up to where you can type in a, a coordinate, it's only allowed. Did you, hit, did you hit the space bar? Oh, space bar. Yeah, so tap the space bar, and then you'll see that field pop up next to your um, the upper Got left it. corner. Got it? Yeah, thanks. Perfect. Okay, so once you place that point, we're going to move on to step three. It says use the circle center point tool to create a circle center at the point created by step two. So I'll go back to Mastercam. And something I forgot to do, let me check the value or the diameter of the hole that we're going to create. So there's a couple of different things we can do. We can create a circle equal in diameter to the countersink or equal in diameter to the hole that's being drilled in the part. And I think last time we did, made the hole or we made the circle equal in diameter to the countersink. And I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to create a circle. It has a diameter value of 0.425. And I'm going to place it at the point that we just created. Back inside of Mastercam, I'll go to wireframe, circle center point. Now, because I have a point already located there, I can let my cursor lock onto it. You could also hit the space bar again and type in the values, but that would be a little bit more work than I want to do right now. So for the diameter, 0.425. You hit enter and then move your cursor back into the graphics area. You'll see a preview of that circle. Position your cursor close to the point and you'll see it lock onto it. And you'll also see a small point icon pop up next to your cursor. Once it locks onto it, left click and then select the green check. And I would save my work again. So file save. How's everyone doing up to this point? Good. Good. Nice. All right, so from here, I'll go back to the project page. Let's look at the next step. So step four, use the translate tool to create the additional instances of the circle and point. Go back to the drawing. It appears as if the columns and the rows are equally spaced. It's probably a good idea to double check it though. So 1.25 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.75, 2 minus 1.25 is 0 0.75, 2 0.75 minus 2. Yeah, so I'm, I'm confident that these are all equally spaced. So I'll start by creating the additional copies along the X axis and the spacing between them is going to be 0.75 inches. We're gonna use the transform translate tool. I'll go to transform, translate. Mastercam is prompting, it says select entities to translate. So if I select, I could pick select the point, pick select the circle, or I could come up here and select select all point entities. And then go down here, select all arc entities. And when they become selected, they take on this yellow glowing appearance. I'll select end selection. And then I'll come over to the values or the parameters for the translate tool. In the delta X, set it to 0.75. You can change the direction. If you go to the very bottom, it says 
direction, define, define side, opposite side. So I'm selecting opposite side. And then I'll go back up to the instances and increase the number of instances until you get the correct number. So I've got four additional instances for a total of five. Once you have those four additional instances created, we're gonna move forward and we're gonna move on and create the additional copies along the Y axis. To stay within this tool, if I select the blue check, that finalizes the creation of the additional instances. And now it's letting me select additional, additional geometry so to translate on a different uh, axis if need be. So in this particular case, I could select all points. Again, all circles, or because we used a transform tool, we can use select all result entities or we select all, or select all group entities. And the result entities, these are the results of the transform tool. And then the group, this will be the original item that was used in the transform tool. Once you have those selected, select end selection. It's still trying to translate along the X axis. So in the Delta X, clear the value, I'm typing in zero. And then in the Y, if I go back to the drawing, the spacing along the Y, now if you can't do the math in your head, which I can't, you can actually type this in into the field that we're running. So 1.875 minus 1.25. So 1.875 minus 1.25, I hit enter, 0.625. And in this case, I need to decrease the number of copies. Double check the blueprint, make sure that it's correct. So I've got additional, I've got three rows total. It appears to be correct. So from here, I'll select the green check to finalize the creation of those additional copies. To clear the temporarily assigned colors, I could right click on my screen and select the clear colors icon, or you, go, you can go to the home tab and under attributes, you'll find clear colors. And from here, this would be a good time for me to save my work. So from here, I'll go back to the project page and let's go back down to the steps. So step four, we just completed step four. Uh, step five, create the standard levels that we'll be using in this class. So here's an example, or here's an image of the level manager. It's got all of the levels that we use for this class. We might add, add some additional levels towards the end of the semester, but these will be the defaults for every project that we work on. So let's create the seven levels and we're gonna create, we're gonna name them like you see here. So I'll go back, go back in the master cam bring up the level manager i'll go to view managers levels so by default there's one level it doesn't have a name i currently have 34 entities on that level let's start by naming level one wireframe i'm sorry we'll call it solid support geometry and if you forget just reference this example right here so first level solid support geometry then hit enter to create a second level or create a new level select the green plus sign add a new level you can see the second level has been created to, to rename it i just double click in the name field and i'll call this one solid model create a third level i'll, I'll select the green plus sign to rename it <clears throat> i'll double click in the name field I'll call this wireframe from solid. Level four, I'll call that dimensions. Create a new level, click, uh, select the green plus sign, double click in the name field, we'll call this one dimensions. Level five, we'll call it points. Level six, material. Mm -hmm. 
and level seven, we'll call it name. <clears throat> Once you have all the levels created, let's start by placing the points on level five. And to do that, you'll go to the home tab and in the organize section, you'll see this icon, change level. It's also available to us from a flyout menu. So in the graphics area, if you right click on your screen from this flyout menu, right here, same icon, change level, select it. Master Cam is prompting us to select entities that change the level of. I'll select all points. So I'm using my uh, quick mask selection icon. So I'll select all point entities. Then I'll select end selection. Brings up this dialog box. I want to move the points to level five. Current level seven, so I can't use active level. So I'll deselect, use active level. And then in the number field, I'll type in five and then hit enter. And then you can see that the 15 entities have been transferred to level five. This would be a good time for me to save my work. How's everyone doing? Good. Nice. So we created, we created our levels on the level manager. We moved a few items. I'll go back to the project page. And we're moving on to step six is use the smart dimension tool to dimension the two dimensional representation of the part. And what we're going to do is we're going to dimension the part or dimension the 2D representation of the part similar to what we see on the drawing. It doesn't need to be exact. We're just verifying that everything is in the correct location. So inside of Mastercam, I'm going to use this edge to define all the X locations, then I'll use this edge to define the Y locations. Before I start creating dimensions, I like to change the wireframe color. So wireframe color, I'll set it to this red color or color 10. I'll make the dimensions level, the active level. Anything we create gets placed on the active level, it takes on the active color or current color. I'll reference blueprint. I'll go to drafting, smart dimension. I'll select the top horizontal line. And I'm rolling my scroll wheel, zooming in and out. You might need to change the size of the font. If it's too big or too small, well, this act, while this dimension is still active, you can go to height. And if it's too big, change it. Mine's currently set to 0.15. That seems to be a good size for this particular dimension or this particular project. And to flip the arrows to the inside, A button. I can select <clears throat> inside or I can hit the A key, but got set to the inside. I'll approximate the location and left click. And I'll do the same thing for these one, two, three, four, five uh, dimensions. I'll select the edge, then I'll select the center point, and then I'll place the dimension. So start by selecting the edge, the center point, place the dimension off of the part, select the edge, center point, Place the dimension, select the edge, center point, left click to place the dimension, and I'll just keep doing that until I get all the dimensions located or placed. So I've got all my horizontal dimensions created. I'll do something very similar or do the same thing for the Y dimensions. But this time I'll select this top horizontal line. So back to the smart dimension tool. I'll select 
this edge, I can select the center of this hole. Select the edge, the center, edge, center. And then for the overall length, I can select this edge and this edge. And I should say overall height. And then I'll select OK. Now this one dimension, it's a different shade of red. I'm going to delete it and see if I can get it to match the other ones. I'll redo it. That's better. So I've got all the horizontal dimensions created. I have the vertical dimensions created. If I go back to the project page, I could create a diameter dimension. And to mention the, four, the 0.425 diameter hole, or I'm sorry, 0.425 diameter countersink. Once again, go to the Smart Dimension tool. If I select the circle, now I'm approaching the circle from, say, the four o'clock position. I get close, left click. I can hit the A key to flip the arrow to the outside. And you need to be careful with this one because it wants to do different things depending on how you pull the dimension away from the selected item. So 0.425, I'll pull the dimension off of the part. Left click to place it. From here, I'll select OK. I can fit my screen and I can save my work. So now that I've created all of the dimensions, I'll go back to the project page and let's see what the next step is. So we've created uh, created the dimensions. We're done with step six. Step seven, use the extrude tool to create the base feature for the solid model of the part. Okay. So before I create the solid model, I'm going to make the solid model level, the active level. I'll make the dimensions level invisible. I'll go to the home tab and this is the wireframe color. This is a solid color and this is a surfaces color. I want to change the solid color so that it's something other than what the solid support geometry is. I'm thinking something like this right now. Actually, this blue color right here. So any solid that I create will take on this color. It'll be placed on this level, solid model. Anytime I'm starting to give my part some depth in the Z, I like to look at it from an isometric view. So if I right click on my screen, from the flat menu, I'll select isometric. If I go back to the blueprint, in this side view, you can see that the thickness of the part is one inch. I'm going to extrude the outside profile of the part so that the coordinate system stays on the top of the part and that the solid support geometry also stays on the top of the part. So we're going to extrude, extrude this in the negative Z. I'm going to go to solids. In the create section, select extrude. That brings up the wireframe chaining dialog box. My mode, set the wireframe. I'm gonna change it to C plane. And then for the selection method, select chain. Once you do that, in the graphics area, left click on one of the items that represents the outside profile of the part. So I'm gonna select this line right here. All connected entities become selected. They take on this glowing yellow appearance. I'll select okay. And it's extruding it in the positive Z for a distance of one inch. Those are two default settings. To change the direction, I'll select this icon, reverse all. The distance at one inch is good. You can see that the coordinate system and the solid support geometry are sitting on the top of the solid model. So that's what I want. From here, I'll select OK. And this would be a good time for me to save my work. So file, save. We need to create the holes 
that are in the part. If I go back to the drawing, this call out here says that the holes that are going all the way through the part are 0.266 in diameter. The countersink, that's this profile right here, tracing it with my cursor. The countersink, which is defined or identified with this symbol, has a 0.425 diameter, 90 degrees. So I'm going to use this information for the hole tool that's under the solids tab. I'll go back to Mastercam. Under the solids tab, in the create section, select hole. For the position, and before we go to the position, let's do this. Let's go to type, expand the type. We're gonna use countersink. And there's some information that we need to provide uh, the, the diameter. This is the diameter of the hole that's going all the way through, 0.266. The countersink diameter, 0.425, then the countersink angle is going to be 90. For the depth, the distance, have it set to through all. Then once you fill out all of this information, you can come back up here and with this icon, it says add position, click on it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to work your way around, select the circles, and you'll see it appears as if the point's changing to the color white. But what's actually happening is it's highlighting the center point of the circle that we're creating. So it might have been a good idea to even turn the points off before we did this. So you're going to select all 15 circles. And when you're done selecting the circles, hit enter. And once you hit enter, all those positions populate this field. You'll see them all appear in this field. And then you see a preview of what the whole, the countersunk hole is going to look like. If everything looks correct, select the green check. I can look at it from an isometric view, fit my screen, unzoom 80%, and I'll save my work. Um. So I've created these countersunk holes in the part. Let's say I wanted to add a hole or I wanted to delete some holes. What I can do, if I go to, well, <clears throat> let's see, if I go to view, solids, expand, all these countersunk holes, if I right click and select edit parameters, it brings me back to this page. And I can actually delete items from this list. Let's see, undelete all. Select again. Now you see, I've only got three there. What I can do, I can select this icon again and then just reselect these items. So once you get comfortable with um, the tools, you'll find out that they're a little bit more flexible than they initially appear. So from here, I'll select enter. All of the countersunk holes are in the part. I'll select okay. Isometric. I'll need to regenerate my solid model. It's this icon right here, regenerate or regen selected. And then I'll select the top solid. From here, I'll go to an isometric view and I'll save my work. And I don't, I don't need to have my solids uh, manager visible, so I'll close it out. And I'll also make the points level invisible. So I'll go to points toggle off the visibility of the points level. And I'm also done with my solid model. So I've created the solid model. I'm gonna make the solid support geometry level invisible so I don't accidentally delete something corrupting my solid model. 
How's everyone doing? Good. Nice. So that was just an alternative way to input the holes. Yeah, I, I went back in. I just wanted to show you that show you that you can make changes after the fact. Let's say uh, for whatever reason you missed one of the circles, you could go back in and you could actually reselect it instead of redoing the whole thing. So as you get more comfortable with the tools, you'll realize um, uh, some of the tools are more time are more um, effective as far as you know being efficient. But at first, it can be a little little difficult to deal with. All right, so if everyone's good up to this point, I'll go back to the project page. And we are currently on step nine. Use the curve all edges tool to create the wireframe representation of the part. I'll make the wireframe from solid level the active level. I'm going to change the wireframe color. I'll go to home. I'm changing the wireframe color to this yellowish color, gold. I'm going to create curve all edges. And this tool is going to create wireframe geometry on all edges of the part. Make sure the wireframe from solid level is the active level. Make sure that you've changed the color to something that you can see with the current background. I'll go to the wireframe tab. I'm going to go to curves, curve all edges. Now, this is a tool where we have to triple click the solid model. So find a face, triple click on it. And if you do it correctly, the entire part becomes selected. From here, select end selection. And you can see the edges become highlighted. And what's happening is Mastercam is creating wireframe geometry on all edges of the part. From here, I'll select OK. And if you look at the number of entity, if you look at the number of entities on level three, you can now see that there are 57 entities on level three. If I turn off the, or if I make the solid model level invisible, you can see that we have a 3D representation of the part built from wireframe geometry. I'll make the solid model level visible and I'll look at it from an isometric view. And this would also be a good time for me to save my work. How's everyone doing? Good. Nice. From here, I'll go to the next step. Step 10, use the bounding box tool to create the solid representation of the material. So well, this will be the first material representation that we create. There's going to be three. And the first one will be a solid model. And then the second two will be dependent on that solid model. So let's go to the bounding box tool and create a solid representation of the material. Before I do that, make the material level the active level make the solid color something different. I'm going to change it to, uh, let's see here. I'm going to use, I use this color this time. Actually, I'm going to use, I'll use this color. That'll be fine. So the, or the solid color has been changed and the material level is active. I'll go to the wireframe tab. Bounding box. Master Cam is prompting us. Select one or more entities or use Control A to select everything. I'm going to use the Control A key. So Control A, everything becomes selected. I'll select end selection. I'll scroll down. And before you can also check your work. So it says size four by 2.5 by one. It's creating an envelope that completely captures everything that we just selected. Go to the very bottom where it says create geometry, deselect lines and arcs, and then select solids. From here, I'll select okay. 
You see the solid model of the material being created. Once I have it created, I can go back and I can make, I can make the solid model level visible. I can make the material level invisible. We're going to actually use it when we define the material for verify. But, but for the time being, I'll have it turned off. I toggle it back on. You can see the it's basically the part with part before we drill the holes in it. From here, I'll go back to the project page. Step 11. Use the create letters tool to create your first and last initial on the top of the part. Reference the drawing for the size, reference drawing for the size of text and location. Okay. I'll go back up to the drawing. It's telling us to engrave first and last initial here. Use 0.25 tall box font. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna approximate the location. It doesn't need to be exact in this case. I'm gonna use 0.25 tall box font. If I go back to master cam, I'm going to change my construction plane to 2D. And the Z value is set to zero. So when I change it to a 2D construction plane, Z value is zero. Any 2D geometry that we put, uh, create will be planar with this top face. It's gonna have a Z value of zero. Once you set it to 2D, Z is zero. I'll right click on my screen and I'll look at it from a top view. And uh, I'll zoom how in. did you make it 2D? I'm sorry. Okay, not a problem. So see on my screen right here, it's difficult to see. You see at the, at the very bottom? Yes. Just left click on it once and it toggles it back and forth. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. So 2D, Z value set to zero. Once again, it's probably a good idea for us to change the wireframe color to something that we haven't used yet. I'll change it to this green color. From the wireframe tab, I'll go to create letters. For the style, expand this menu and let's select master cam box font. Type in your first and last initial. And then go down to the height. Set the height to 0.25 and hit enter. And when you move your cursor into the graphics area after you hit enter on the height, you should see your initials appear attached to your cursor. Hold on, I got something new. Once you, <clears throat> so get it close to where it needs to be. It doesn't need to be exact. I'm zooming in and I'm just positioning it approximately where it needs to be. Left click. Once you place it, you can select okay. And maybe that wasn't the best color choice for this particular or these initials, but I can, I can work with it. And I'll do that again, control Z. I'll go to wireframe, shapes, create letters, style is box font. So master cam box font, type in your first and last initial, height is 0.25. Get it close to where it needs to be. Left click to place it and then select okay. Now, if you go back to an isometric view, you can see that the initials are sitting on the top of the part. I go back to the drawing, just double checking where they're telling us to place them. So that looks about right. So I'll look at it from a isometric view. I'll fit my screen. I'll unzoom by 80% and I'll save my work. So now that I've created the initials, we'll go back to the project page. And we're looking at step 11. We just created step 11. We're moving on to step 12. And this is what we've done. We've been doing this all along. Uh, I would not recommend saving your work at the very end of all of these steps. I would, I would save after each step, save frequently. So 
save your work, make sure it's saved to the correct location. We have done that. So from here, we're ready to move on to the creating tool paths section of this project. So step one, make the tool paths manager visible and import a machine definition. Inside of Mastercam, I need to bring up my tool path manager. Go to view in the manager section, go to tool paths. Does it matter if we're still in 2D or 3D? Um, it doesn't matter, but let's change back over to a 3D because down the road, um, that could cause some issues. 90% of that's more than that. The majority of the time I work when I'm working inside a mask game, I've got this set to 3D. Since we were done creating geometry, it would probably it would probably be unlikely that it would cause any issues for us. But the majority of the time I've got this set to 3D. Good catch. So from here, I've got the toolpath manager opened up. We're going to bring in a machine definition. Go to machine. Machine type mill. And I'm just going to select the default um, mill type. Before I make any changes to the machine group, I'll go up to file, upper left corner of your screen. So file. From this page, select the project manager. For the project file manager, uh, the project file folder, this is the project folder that we created that we saved the master cam file to. I would also like to have the NC files and NCI files saved to this location. You guys don't have the ability to create these files with the home learning edition of the software, but when you get back to the computer lab at the school, you will have this, you will have this capability. So I want you guys in the habit of doing this. So project file folder, I want the NC files and the NC files saved to this location. From here, I'll select okay. Get back to Mastercam, I'll select the back arrow. Inside of the Toolpath Manager, under Machine Group 1, Expand Properties, select the plus sign. Select Files. On this page, for the group name, Let's call this Haas VF2. This will be the machine that we run these on. Once you redefine the group name, go down to edit. Left click on edit. In the machine section, you'll see mill spindle group. Expand the mill spindle group. Keep selecting the plus sign and see until you see tool spindle. Once you see tool spindle, double click on it. We need to set the maximum spindle speed to what our machine is capable of. So our machines are only capable of 10,000 or if they are capable of a little bit more than that, we, we don't run them higher than 10,000. So set this to 10,000 RPM. From here, select okay. That'll complete all of the changes that we need to make on this page. So I'll select OK again. That brings us back to this page. We are now done with this tab or this page. From here, I'll go to Tool Settings. Default Program Number. This will be a four to, four, four to five digit number of your choice. Uh, when you go work for somebody, they'll usually have some type of procedure where you check out program number. So in this case, I'm just gonna pull a number out of the air. So this will be 7502, actually 7503. For the feed calculation, set it to from material. For the toolpath configuration, I'll check assign tool number sequentially. I'll check warn of duplicate tool numbers and I'll check use tools, step peck and coolant. From here, I'll jump down to sequence number. Start at one, and then I'll have the lines of code numbered in increments of one. So this is how we can control the line numbers in, inside of our NC file. Once you do this, jump down to the material. If I look at the blueprint, 
We're not specifying what type of material to machine this from. We're going to machine this from aluminum 6061. So I'll go back into Mastercam for the material. Select from the material list. There's not much to choose from. So what I can do is I can right click in this field. I'll select get from library. I'm going to select aluminum inch 6061. With it selected here, I'll select OK. And it now becomes the active material. Once you have the active material selected, select edit. If you need to make any changes to the material name, let's say you wanted to remove that information and then throw a dash T6. So I've updated the material name. I can set the base cutting speed to 300. For the drilling operations, I want to set the percentage of the base to 50%. So I'll left click on 60. I'll hit the enter key. I can now change it. I'll type in 50 and hit enter again. So now when Mastercam calculates the RPM for my drills, it's going to use an SFM of 150. From here, I'll select OK. That'll complete all of the changes that we need to make on this page. From here, I'll go to Stock Setup. Stock plane should be set to top. For the shape, because I have a solid model that accurately represents what the material is going to look like. I'm going to use the solid forward slash forward slash mesh. And if I select this icon right here, it allows me to go back into Mastercam and pick select that solid model that represents the material. Now, in my case, I don't have it visible. So I'll have to go to the level manager, make the material level visible. And now I can pick select the solid that represents my material. Now, be careful. You want to select the solid that represents the material, not the solid model of the part. So I'm deliberately picking inside of one of the holes where the part doesn't have any material. So I'll click right here. Once you select that solid model, the basic dimensions or the, um, the, uh, the, the outside dimensions of the part appear in these fields. I could also turn on display and I'll select solid. Now you guys might have shaded. I can't remember what it was. It, they changed the name of it right here. So I'm selecting solid. I believe you have to select shaded. It is shaded. It's shaded. Perfect. So from here, I'll select okay. And it's hard to see because I've got the part, the solid model of the material and the material representation for verify all overlaying each other. So what I can do if I make the material level invisible, I'll make the wireframe from solid level the active level. Make the wireframe from solid the active level. I'll make the solid model level invisible. This red shaded rectangular shape is actually the material shape that we're going to see inside of Verify. To toggle off the stock display from the toolpaths tab in the stock section, that's how you can make it visible or invisible. And I'm just checking the shape and the location. Once I verify that it's in the, in the right location, right shape, I toggle it off and I'll make my solid model visible again. From here, I'll get it from an isometric view. I'll fit my screen, unzoom, and I'll save. So I just noticed, or was just brought to my attention that I've got multiple entities on the solid model level. There should only be the solid model, one level or one item. And reason being is I've got my initials created with zero entities on the name level. So what I'm going to do- I your screen, I'm not seeing it. Okay, my bad, hold on. That's what I did. Thanks for pointing that out. Okay, so <laughs> throw it in reverse. I'm gonna back, back up a few steps. So 
I'm looking at my, my level manager and there are 12 entities on my solid model level. Reason being is when I created my initials, I've got, I didn't change, I didn't make the name level, the active level. So you might have more uh, depending on how many pieces of geometry it takes to make your initials. So I'm going to move this wireframe. Uh, I'll move my initials to the name level to do that. Because of I've got a different color assigned to these initials, I could go to the selection filter right here, select all entities by color. It brings up this dialog box. Now, these different colors here are only the colors that are currently visible on my screen. I think I've used several more colors throughout this session of Mastercam, but it's only showing me the ones that are currently visible on my screen. And I believe this green color right here is the color of my initials. So I'm selecting the green color. I'll select OK. They become selected. Cute. I'll right click on my screen. I'll select change level. And we're going to move the selected items to level seven. So I don't have use level or use active level checked. In the number level, just type in seven. Hit enter. Cool. And you can see. I now have 11 entities on my name level. Now, if you have, if your initials are different than mine, there's gonna be maybe less, maybe more. So you can now see that there's only one item on my solid model level. From here, I can actually toggle off the name level. I'll make it visible when I go to engrave my initials in the part. If I look at it from an isometric view, looks decent. Solid model should only be one item on that level. Uh, the wireframe from solid, I have 57 entities. Wouldn't be a bad idea to delete duplicates. So if I go to home in the delete section, delete duplicates. I currently don't have any duplicates. If there were, it would pick them up here and remove them. So I can go back to the project page. And the next step is to modify the settings in the machine definition. We've done that. Uh, step three, it says use the drill tool path to create the pilots for all through holes on the part. Before we, we create any drilling operations or any tool paths, we're gonna create a stock model that represents the material before any machining is done to it. So I'll go back to Mastercam. To define the stock model before any machining is done, I'm actually going to use the solid model that represents our material. So I'll bring that I'll bring that solid back from the levels manager, make the material level visible. Back in the toolpath manager. Oh, something I forgot to do. It says toolpath group dash one. Let's rename this so it says first operation. Right click on it. Groups. Rename. I'll call this first operation. And I misspelled it, so I'll redo it. So right click, groups, rename. First operation. You'll see this red insertion arrow underneath first operation. I'm going to go to the toolpath tab. In the stock section, I'll select stock model. Brings up the parameters page for the stock model. Let's start with stock definition. For the name, we can call it raw stock. And for the initial stock shape, because I have a solid model that represents my material visible on my screen, I'll select model. I'll select the cursor icon that allows me to go back into Mastercam or the graphics area of Mastercam. I'm gonna pick select, now carefully pick select the solid that represents the material, not the part. That's why I'm clicking inside of this hole right here. So I select the solid model that represents the material. I select end selection. And that's all we have to do for the first stock model. I'll select okay. 
you can see the stock model appear on the screen. It's, it takes on this gray color. The problem with it is that it's overlaying a couple other representations of the part, the solid model. So if I make the material level invisible, if I make the solid model of the part invisible, you can now see the stock model. It's in the right location. Once you verify that it's in the right location, right shape, you can go back to the toolpath manager and toggle off the visibility of the stock model. From here, I'll make the solid model of, <clears throat> make the solid model of a visible. The wireframe from solid is visible. I'll look at it from an isometric view. I'll fit my screen, unzoom 80%, and I'll save my work.